priming is done and have switches in Spanish English code switch. Sorry about that, that's better. <laughs> My name is Angie, and as Julie kindly said, I will be um, talking about priming a star and ever code switches. So. so for those of you who may not know, um, I'm gonna explain a little bit of what priming is. Priming is the facilitation during processing that occurs when a spoken sentence has the same syntactic form as a preceding sentence. The fact that priming occurs indicates that the presence of activation of stored representation of different types of knowledge is occurring. So an example of priming would be if a participant was um, shown the first image to your left and then they heard the sentence, the chef gave a gun to the boxer, then when the participant is presented the second um, image to your right, they may respond in two ways when asked to um, describe the picture. They may say, the nun threw a cup to the swimmer, or the nun threw the swimmer a cup. The first sentence in red would be an example of priming because they have um, constructed the sentence in the same syntactic structure as the sentence that they heard previously. So why does priming occur? One hypothesis is that it occurs to facilitate the use of dialogue. Speakers are faced with highly complex problem, a highly complex problem of communicating an idea fluently, pretty much like I'm doing right now. So to do this, they must integrate a number of very different kinds of information. Any means of reducing the computational load would be beneficial in, um, while speaking uh, with another person. So most past work has looked at priming in one language. My work will be looking at priming in code switching in two languages. So for those of you who may not know, code switching uh, is a fluent alteration of two languages within discourses. So there are two types. There is intersentential, which is two sentences, just like right here, Ana llegó anoche, and then in another language, she will stay here for a week. And then there's intrasentential, which is within the sentence, they're code switching. Ana dijo que she arrived last night. So past research, past research on code switching. Kutstra, Van Hel, and Dijkstra used, um, my study is based on their study, and they focused priming of code switches. So in their study, they used Dutch native, uh, Dutch native speakers with an L2 of English. They, in their study, they always started in Dutch and ended in English, and their sentences were in subject, verb, object order. They found that Dutch English speakers displayed a tendency to repeat the switch position of the prime. <coughs> so an example from their study is the participants would hear, and excuse my Dutch, I do not speak Dutch, uh, participants would hear, the jongen greet in ball to the butcher, and then they would have to repeat out loud the same sentence. Then when they were presented um, with the following picture and the, the following sentence, the jongen greet and trumpet to the diver, they had to uh, decide if they had encountered the sentence before. So a question could be, is it surprising that priming occurred in their study being that normally the um, Dutch speakers are not code switchers? After all, priming is an index of the presence of activation of store representations of different types of knowledge. And if the, particip if the participants in Kutstam et al's study were not code switchers, then what type of representations were they accessing? So this is an interesting question that I had, but maybe I thought it could be <coughs> that priming is occurring in speakers who normally do not code switch because of syntactic boundaries. Syntactic boundaries tend to be very psychologically real to all of us when we're speaking. <laughs> so my research question is, can we observe priming of code switches at sites that do not constitute syntactic boundaries? So I examined this with um, two groups, my Granada group in Spain who are non-habitual code switchers, and my US group here who are habitual code switchers. And I traveled to Granada to test these bilinguals, and my strategy was to use a comparative approach between both um, groups. <coughs> so studies that have examined intrasentential code switching have shown that certain syntactic junctures are more likely to undergo language switching than others. So here's some examples. Several studies examining the production of Spanish-English code switches, code switches have documented a production asymmetry involving alternations within the auxiliary phrase. For example, estar to be plus English participle 
Plus the English person. person. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Um, would be equally as frequently said as B in English plus the English person. Participle. Participle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> los niños están cleaning their rooms would be just as frequent as los niños are cleaning their rooms. But then on the other hand, it would be more infrequent to have haber, the verb to have in Spanish, plus English participle than have plus English participle. Another example of this is los niños han cleaned their rooms would be less frequent than los niños have cleaned their rooms. These are some more, uh, from past work, these are some more sentences um, just the same way. Mi marido está working on his masters. Donde estás teaching? Siempre está promising cosas. Yo creo que apenas se había washed out. So for my research now. I had the privilege of going to Pyre, I mean, to be in Pyre, sorry. I had the privilege of going to Granada, Spain. And in Spain, the pretty much the equivalent of more building is Simsic. It's a very gorgeous building that I loved going to work there every day. And our host advisor was Dr. Teresa Bajo. So my predictions for my experiment. For the Narjo Habitual Code Switchers in Granada, I predicted that <coughs> Both frequent and infrequent code switches, since they are non-habitual code switchers, would be in would not be easily primable because both of these would be infrequent for them. But then for the U.S. group, which I am currently testing right now, um, who are the habitual code switchers, while I predict that both may be primable frequent and infrequent code switches, I believe that infrequent code switches would be more primable um, than frequent code switches. So my study design, there are 43 critical pairs and 16 filler items, which are all images. The participants had standardized images re that representing actions that could be expressed in a progressive way, is slash is star plus the verb, and in a perfective way, have plus a ver plus the verb. And two computers were used, one for the participant, one for the confederate. So the clip art picture to your left could is pretty much how they're set up. And if, for those of you who do not know what a confederate is, a confederate is a person who um, acts as a participant, but is actually fully aware and engaged with the researcher about what the participant is doing, uh, about what the research um, is trying to analyze. And in Granada, um, Manolo Ruiz, I was very fortunate to work with him, and he was my confederate for the Granada portion. Here in the US, I am the confederate. Um, so, example stimuli. Uh, so the Confederates had, uh, the Confederate has six possible sentences that can show up on their screen, and they have a picture, but the participant doesn't know that they're just reading the sentences, and this is just for our control. So this is what the Confederate sees on the screen, then he has to jumping like a frog, for example. Then the participant has to choose which image uh, represents what the Confederate had said. And then it's the participant's turn to speak. And we're interested in seeing if they had been primed in any way by comparing the structure of the confederate to the structure of that the participant says. So I do not have concrete data right now um, because I want to compare the group to the US group um, from Granada, but I have preliminary <coughs> findings. So there is no priming of either structure. In 18, I have 18 very highly proficient bilinguals from Granada and we found no priming in them. Across the 18 participants, there was a total of six productions of English plus, uh, Vizdar plus English ING verbs, and they were scattered throughout. They were different participants um, who said this. It wasn't just one participant saying the six um, types of code switches. But it raises the question of why we see a star plus English verb and the production of these speakers. So um, this is the preliminary analysis I have right now, and I'm currently testing. I would like to say special thanks to my advisor, Julie Ducius, and Eleonora Rossi. And um, thank you so much to Jarrett John Kutstra, who I based this study off of and was amazing in helping me last year while he was still here. Teresa Bajo, uh, the Pyre graduate students who um, were with me in Granada, they guided the undergrads a lot. Um, and I've been collaborating with Annie, and I greatly appreciate all, of, all that she has taught me so far. Um, Christian Navarro, who has also helped me. 
and uh, the PIRE undergrads, who I experienced a lot of things with, and the PIRE program. Thank you very much. And it is time for questions. Thank you very much. 